You're not even gonna believe this spot I got. Oh my God, I love, I love National Forest Land. Oh my God. What is going on YouTube and greetings from Grand Teton National Park. Grand Teton has been at the top of my bucket list for a long time. So I'm really happy to finally be here and share this experience with you. In today's video, I'm gonna show you a couple of the sites from Grand Teton, and then I'm gonna go try to find a free campsite for the next couple nights. I'm gonna explain the process I go through to find a free campsite, and then I'm gonna go look for another free campsite to spend five or six days at. So this should be pretty exciting. So come on, let's go explore Grand Teton. So some might view the overcast sky as a negative, but it ended up being a positive. As you'll see, I had one of the most iconic Teton spots all to myself because no one was out that day. All right, so I'm at one of the most iconic spots in Grand Teton. So you have the Grand Tetons back there. And then over here, you have the Mormon barn. This is a classic iconic picture that you see when you see Grand Teton National Park. So it's really exciting to be here. I've always admired the photography from this place. So uh, really cool. I wish it was a little bit clearer out, but that's okay. After spending about an hour in this pretty awesome place, I hopped back in my rig and headed to another iconic spot, Ginny Lake. In order to get to Ginny Lake, you actually have to go into Grand Teton National Park. So you gotta pay unless you have a national park pass. Okay, so I was going to try to go to the south entrance of Ginny Lake, but it was completely packed at 8 a.m. So I talked to one of the rangers and she said, go to the north entrance to Ginny Lake. There's a really cool scenic drive and it's actually a better experience than the southern entrance to Ginny Lake where just about everybody goes. So that's what I'm doing right now. I'm on the scenic drive and it's raining a little bit, but it's pretty cool. Hopefully I'll get some good shots of Jenny Lake for you. A few moments later, I found a way to get down to the lake. So that northern entrance to Jenny Lake is pretty cool. The drive is really beautiful. And there are a couple scenic stops that you can get out and take a little hike. So that's what I did. I hiked down here to Jenny Lake. It's just as beautiful as in the pictures. Today is an overcast day, so you can't really see the amazing beauty that Jitty Lake is famous for. Usually these mountains you see in the background, the Tetons, will reflect off the lake. And so if you've ever looked at any of the pictures of Jitty Lake, which I encourage you to do, there are some gorgeous shots of this lake with the mountains reflecting off of it. Okay, now that I've seen a couple things here in Grand Teton National Park, I'm gonna head out and try to find a free campsite as close to the park as I can possibly get. We'll see if I'm able to do that. My friend Jenny sent me GPS coordinates to a spot about 10 miles outside of Teton National Park. She had found a spot, and so I was hoping maybe I could find one as well. <laughs> Bear beware. So for the next four miles, there's uh, camping available, free dispersed camping. So gonna see if we can find any. Being from Missouri, man, my head's always on a swivel when I'm anywhere where it says there might be bears. <laughs> so here's where we're at. We're on Spread Creek Road. All right, so the campy limit is five days. That's a lot different than most of the places I've been. Most of the BLM land and National Forest land I have been in in Colorado is 14 days. So maybe that means we'll be able to get a spot tonight. So this area ended up having 12 designated campsites. The first five have awesome views of the Tetons. I didn't get in one of those but I eventually found a spot, spot seven, and it had its own little cool factor. All right, so I found a couple open spots actually, which was really cool. My friend Jenny is at one of them, but I think she's gonna come down here because she's at the very first spot and I'm down in spot seven and it's pretty cool. So I'll show you around here real quick. So I got the van nice and tucked in here. And if Ginny comes down here, she's probably gonna park somewhere over here or try to find spots seven, eight, nine, ten down there. Um, but it's got a nice little fire circle here. And then this tells you all the rules, like, hey, be careful of the bears. And then 
I don't know why I always get lucky with these little creeks, but got this little creek right here. It's a fast, it's a super fast moving creek. So I'm gonna try to cross whoa, <laughs> on this little log and you'll get a nice little lap if I fall in. That'll be great YouTube content, won't it? I'll try not to. And then across that little log is this huge like riverbed. If you haven't subscribed or hit that like button yet, what the heck are you waiting for? You know you want to, you know it'll make you feel better. So just go on down there and do it. This area is only about a hundred yards from my campsite. It's a riverbed. I don't know if it's the Snake River or if it's a river that leads into the Snake River, but it's pretty awesome to be able to come out here, hang out at these ice cold river streams and have the Tetons here in the background. I haven't seen any bear or moose yet, even though there's bear and moose signs everywhere. Oh, Jenny just pulled in. She hates being on YouTube, uh, but she has a really cool Instagram called Winnebago, and I'm supposed to say hi to her mother for her. So this was a really awesome campsite. Jenny ended up staying for five nights because she had to work and the internet was reliable in the area. But I left after four nights. I wanted to go find somewhere that was even more remote and maybe a more challenging free campsite to find. If you're enjoying this video, please hit that thumbs up button and leave a comment below telling me where you're watching from. The YouTube algorithm will show this video to more people, the more thumbs up and the more comments I have. So I appreciate you doing that. Also, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my weekly videos. Okay, so I figure while I'm on this 30 minute drive to my new campsite, I would talk about how I go about finding campsites. I have two primary methods. The first method, and I think the most important and the one you should really try to use, is recommendations from friends. Now you might be saying, I don't have any friends at camp. So neither did I before, uh, before I set out on this adventure. Um, what I did was I joined a couple of groups. I joined the escapers group and that gave me access to a bunch of different people that have a bunch of different kinds of rigs and have a wealth of knowledge about camping on national forest land and BLM land. I'll be honest with you, I didn't think I was going to do much of that. I thought I was going to be mostly in campsites, but I'm really glad that I met people that taught me the ropes. The second group I'm a part of is called the Winnie B Association. It's part of Winnebago's group. It's a little subgroup. It's all the Class B owners. Um, they've also been a valuable resource. They've all clued me in to really cool spots to boondock at. And so that's the primary method I use. I get spots from people I know. The second method are a couple websites. And usually when I get sites from people I know, I go to these websites and read the reviews, see what the cell phone reception is, things like that. So the two sites I use primarily are Campendium and freecampsites.net. I know there's a million others, there's apps, but those are the two that I'm most familiar with and the ones that I use. But if you know some that are really good, Make sure you comment below, share it with the audience, let them know what you use, whether it's an app or a website. Those two have worked really well for me. The first one I usually go to is Campendium because they usually have really good pictures. Usually I'll find a site on there and then I'll go to freecampsites.net and I go there because they have a lot of reviews and they also have more dispersed camping campsites. So those are the two websites I use and I've had nothing but great luck with them. I've been out here on the road for almost two and a half months now, and I've only spent two nights at a campground and three nights mooch docking, camping in my friend's driveways. So for me, those two methods have worked very well, getting recommendations from my friends and using Campendium and freecampsites.net. So I just turned on to another dirt road and I've really come to love these national forests, um, gravel and dirt roads. They usually lead to some really, really cool campsites. 
So I'm hoping that's the case today. Like I mentioned earlier, my friend Tony is the one that gave me these coordinates and then I looked on freecampsites.net, verified that it was a camp area. There were a bunch of sites. And so here we go. Let's try to find one. Hopefully one's open if there is one. Um, yeah, fingers crossed. I eventually made it to Tony's campsite and it was amazing, but unfortunately there was already somebody there. So I pulled out my GPS map and I realized the road I was on went another 20 miles. So I figured I'd keep going into the National Forest and seeing if I could find another spot. Five miles in, I found the most incredible spot. Oh, I can't even believe, I keep saying this like, I think I found the best spot ever. Like, <laughs> I can't even believe this spot. Let me, let me just give you like a little, see all these like beautiful mountain flowers over here. And then look at the Tetons <laughs> in my background. That's gonna be the view out of my bedroom window. I ended up staying in this campsite for another five nights before packing up my gear and going and searching for another awesome campsite. What this experience taught me was there are amazing campsites to be had if you're willing to do a little research and go to places that other people might not be willing to go.